Well, the National Parks Board is partnering OCBC Bank on a pilot to restore and protect seagrass. Oh, these marine plants provide a critical food source and habitat for sea creatures. But more than 45% of seagrass meadows have disappeared from Singapore shores over the last five decades. Seagrass meadows are important habitat for lots of species, including sea stars, sea cucumbers, snails. All of these form an important part of the intertidal food web. They are also uh, important blue carbon habitat, which means they sequester a lot of carbon and it's important in our fight against climate change. Researchers will test innovations on transplanting seagrass. They will also seek to better understand how restoring seagrass habitats will protect other marine wildlife and store more carbon underwater. The three-year restoration project will be fully funded by OCBC. It's the bank's fourth climate action project with NPARC since 2017. We have a big group of volunteers who are very uh, passionate about uh, uh, fighting climate change and uh, they have planned uh, quite a lot of mangroves before so at uh, this time they will be joining um, the research work and also um, the helping with the, trans uh, the transplantation. Well, improving seagrass meadows is one of 17 projects for the Coastal Protection and Flood Resilience Institute Singapore, or CFI. And joining me is Professor Adrian Law. He's Executive Director of CFI. And also with us is Assistant Professor Gary Lay, an expert on seagrass from NUS. Well, let's get the first question to Professor Lay. Uh, we just heard from different sources there why it matters seagrass depletion to marine creatures as well as the overall attempt to protect and restore our environment. If you could sum that up very quickly, first, why it matters for creatures and why it matters for us to keep these meadows to protect our environment. Yes, seagrass meadows play an important role in dissipating wave energy. Without seagrass, coastal areas will be more vulnerable to wave attack. And also, seagrass can stabilize sediments and the seabed. The loss of seagrass habitats may lead to a loss of sediment and degraded water quality. We need to keep them alive and keep them survive there. Well, we heard Professor Lee there, Professor Lord. Now, uh, solutions to, we keep hearing this, so it's not enough to say look to high-tech solutions. Increasingly, we try to involve a more organic, natural process as well. What is the value of a nature-based solution to what Professor Lay just mentioned, the loss of our seagrass meadows? Well, nature-based solutions uh, such as seagrass, mangroves, they offer, multi they offer a multifunctional uh, solution that provide human benefits and biodiversity benefits. Uh, at the same time, they also protect our shore. So they are of obvious importance, and it is one of the major research focus in CFI Singapore. What is the major focus? Sorry, very quickly. Uh, our major focus is in integrated uh, nature-based solution. Okay. So not only that we will look at nature-based solution, but we will also look at the integration of nature-based solution together with grey shoreline, so that uh, we can implement uh, integrated nature-based solution in a tighter coastal, coastal space. Right, uh, Professor Lee, in terms of, I suppose, uh, I put this very crudely and naively, replanting, or maybe transplanting back our seagrass meadows, what sort of progress have you seen? Well, so our work on seagrass focused on improving our understanding of how these seagrass behave underwater, physically and ecologically. So our we quantify through mathematical modeling and an experiment, a field experiment, just how large and how dense a seagrass meadow must be to provide sufficient damping of waves and the currents. But the good news is that with our models, researchers, engineers, practitioners can accurately evaluate the effectiveness of seagrass in wave attenuation and sediment erosion control. So when you talk about density, you're returning it to do you measure in terms of returning to what it used to be originally, or do you just set your own benchmark in terms of what it must achieve in terms of density before you will consider this a replanting or a transplanting? Professor Lee, sorry, very quickly before we return to Professor Law. Yes. Yes, so 
we need to have a certain density such that the seagrass will have a positive feedback. So it will lower the velocity and there will be more plants surviving. We need to have the past this threshold to get a positive feedback. Hmm. Professor Law, you talked about integrated solutions earlier. I think the integrated matters on several levels, including how to bring together industry and academia. Uh, how do you work with industry to make sure they are, to use that part, common word, on board in this effort? Well, first of all, industry partners are very important because they offer real-world insights and experience that our researchers can learn from uh, so that they can better understand the challenges in the field. Uh, and also when, during the research project, when they come up with an innovation, uh, they can also uh, tap on the resources of the industry partner to try out the new innovations uh, in the field. So they can, they can quickly arrive at a, a solution uh, more effectively. Is it hard to get them, uh, is it hard to get industries to be involved in this? Uh, it has not been hard so far. We have had uh, overwhelming response from the industry. Uh, for, uh, our institute was set up uh, one year ago and we have a number of industrial outreach events and there are many industry uh, participants who come and join our events. So no need to persuade, they are essentially interested anyway. I think the, I must say that the response is overwhelming. All right. Professor Lee, uh, first of all, I was talking about nature-based solutions. Uh, I had a broad idea of it. If you could very quickly outline what those might be and where you might think we might put more effort into finding more nature-based solutions. Well, I would like to echo Prof. Law's, uh, the, what Prof. Law has shared. Besides seagrass, we're looking at other nature-based solutions, including mangrove, as well as a few hybrid solutions. By hybrid, I mean it's this combination of hard structures and these natural elements. We're exploring, for example, the combination of concrete planters with mangrove seedlings inside, and we're exploring real coral reefs and artificial coral reefs. Additionally, we're exploring transplanting microalgae or seagrass around submerged breakwaters. All right, uh, final question to Professor Law. We just heard Professor Lee that uh, the, the various hybrid solutions that are available. CFI already just a year old, 17 products running on coastal protection. What else is up your sleeve? Final question. Well, um, we, uh, we have started uh, 17 uh, projects. Um, we will be starting even more projects in the future. Uh, we, will, we will need some time for the project to conduct their research and come up with uh, good findings that we can test out in the field. So this will be uh, the research and the testing uh, will, be, will be carried out in the next couple of years. Okay, give me a concrete example in the next 30 seconds. Well, we are trying out some uh, ideas uh, of uh, planters, for example, for um, mangrove uh, sieving's and um, new ideas of uh, bio sea walls. Um, this will be tested out in the near future. All right, plenty of grants for improvement and further research on this area. Thanks so much for joining it, gentlemen. Professor Adrian Law there from CFI and Professor Gary Lay from the National University of Singapore. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you.